Hello, my name is Shelley. Welcome to this lesson on algebraic fractions. In this series, we have been going through the basic processes of working with fractions, and we are seeing how to apply them to algebraic fractions. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to find the lowest common multiple. We call it the LCM. To begin with, let's think of numeric fractions. Now you do know how to add and subtract fractions with numbers, but let's just refresh your memory with an example. I am going to add 3 divided by 5 and 2 divided by 3. But do you remember that we can only add fractions that are like? Fractions that are like are fractions that have the same denominator. Let me show you in a diagram. Here is a whole. This is two-thirds of the whole. And this is three-fifths of the whole. Now, to be able to add or subtract parts, all the parts must be of the same size. We can see that these shaded parts are not the same size. So, what should we do? We must divide the whole into smaller parts so that we can add the shaded parts. But how do we know what size to make these smaller parts? You find that by looking at the two denominators. They tell you into how many parts the whole must be divided. We need to divide it into a number of parts into which both 5 and 3 can divide. And that number is 15. Of course, we could have also chosen 30 or 45, because both 5 and 3 divide into these numbers as well. The numbers 15, 30 and 45 are called common multiples of 3 and 5. But it is convenient to choose the smallest common multiple, namely 15. Now we know that the whole must be divided into 15 parts of equal size. So, let's take a look at this on our diagram. Here, the whole is divided into 15 equal parts. If we count, we see that 2 thirds is equal to 10 fifteenths of the whole. And 3 fifths is equal to 9 fifteenths of the whole. So, let's write down what we have found out. 3 fifths is equal to 9 fifteenths and 2 thirds is equal to 10 fifteenths. Now remember we used 15 because it's the smallest number that both 3 and 5 divide into. It is called our lowest common multiple and we abbreviate that to LCM. When we write the LCM in the denominator of a fraction, we call it the lowest common denominator. And we abbreviate that to LCD. What else can I say about the fractions? Do you remember that 3 fifths and 9 fifteenths are called equivalent fractions? And 2 thirds and 10 fifteenths are also equivalent. Now that we have a common denominator, we can add the fractions. So, 3 divided by 5 plus 2 divided by 3 is equal to 9 divided by 15 plus 10 divided by 15. And this is equal to 19 fifteenths. Remember, when we are adding and subtracting fractions, we can only add and subtract like fractions. In other words, we need to find a lowest common denominator. Now this also applies to algebraic fractions. Let us show you a few examples on how to find the lowest common multiple. Here are three numbers, 6, 5 and 9. 
Can you find the smallest number that they can all divide into? Of course, we can simply multiply 6 by 5 by 9 and get 270. But that does not necessarily give us the smallest common multiple. What we need to do is factorize each number. Now remember to use prime factors because this will help us to find our lowest common multiple easily. To find the lowest common multiple, let's write down the factors of our numbers. So we start off with 6. Now, we could have chosen 6 multiplied by 1, but those are not prime numbers. So let's rather write 2 multiplied by 3. Then we have 5. Now we don't have to write anything with 5 because 5 is already a prime number. 9, we could have written 9 times 1, but once again they're not prime numbers. So let's use 3 times 3. Now we must choose the factors we are going to use to find our lowest common multiple. We must choose 2 and 3 and 5. And now we already have 1, 3. But to make sure 9 divides into our number, we must include another 3. So we write 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5 and our other 3 multiplied is equal to 90. And that is our LCM. Let's do another example on finding the LCM. Find the LCM of 12a squared b squared and 18 a to the power of 4 b c squared. Now look at the first one. Firstly, you need to factorize 12. But remember, you should only use prime factors. We say we are going to prime factorize 12. Now I want you to try this one on your own before I show you the answer. So have a pen and paper ready. Prime factorize 12a squared b squared. Think about it. I hope that was easy. Let's see how you did. 12 is 4 times 3. But 4 is not a prime number. It is 2 squared. So we can write it as 2 squared multiplied by 3. And then we still have our a squared b squared. And this is our prime factorized form. Let's factorize our other number. I want you to try it again before I show you. Factorize 18 a to the power of 4 b c squared. Are you done? Let us compare. 18 is 2 times by 3 squared. And it is still multiplied by a to the power of 4 b c squared. Now that we've factorized, we still need to choose from the factors to find our LCM. Here there are five different prime factors, namely 2, 3, A, B and C. But to make provision for all the factors, we choose the highest power of each different factor. So we have 2 squared, 3 squared, a to the power of 4, b squared, and c squared. And we multiply these by each other and we get 36, a to the power of 4, b squared, c squared. And this is our LCM. So now we've learned how to find the lowest common multiples of algebraic expressions. And now it's time for your task. Find the lowest common multiple of 15x squared y and 12xy squared. Now that you know how to find the lowest common multiple, join me for the next lesson where we will learn to do this with algebraic expressions containing terms.